television by Rual Dal, presented by Dharmendra Sheth, Fluent Lingua Surat. The most important thing we have learned, so far as children are concerned, is never, never, never let them near your television set. Or better still, just don't install the idiotic thing at all. In almost every house we have been, we have watched them gaping at the screen. They loll and slop and lounge about and stare until their eyes pop out. Last week in someone's place we saw a dozen eyeballs on the floor. They sit and stare and stare and sit until they are hypnotized by it, until they are absolutely drunk with all that shocking ghastly junk. Oh yes, we know it keeps them still. They don't climb out the windowsill. They never fight or kick or punch. They leave you free to cook the lunch and wash the dishes in the sink. But did you ever stop to think, to wonder just exactly what this does to your beloved thought? It rots the sense in the head. It kills imagination dead. It clogs and clutters up the mind. It makes a child so dull and blind. He can no longer understand a fantasy, a fairyland. His brain becomes as soft as cheese. His powers of thinking rust and freeze. He cannot think. He only sees. All right, you will cry. All right, you will say. But if we take the set away, what shall we do to entertain our darling children? Please explain. We'll answer this by asking you, what use the darling ones to do? How used they keep themselves contented before this monster was invented? Have you forgotten? Don't you know? We will say it very loud and slow. They used to read. They would read and read and read and read and then proceed to read some more. Great Scott gets books. One half the lives was reading books. The nursery shelves held books galore. Books cluttered up the nursery floor. And in the bedroom by the bed, more books were waiting to be read. Such wondrous, fine, fantastic tales of dragons, gypsies, queens and whales, and treasure isles and distant shores, where smugglers rode with muffled oars, and pirates wearing purple pants, and sailing ships and elephants, and cannibals crouching round the pot, stirring away at something hot. It smells so good, what can it be? Good gracious, it's Penelope. The younger ones had Beatrix Potter with Mr. Todd the Dirty Rotter, and Squirrel Nutkin Pigling Bland, and Mrs. Tiggy Winkle, and just how the camel got his hump, and how the monkey lost his rump, and Mr. Toad, and bless my soul, there's Mr. Rat and Mr. Mole. Oh, books, what books they used to know, those children living long ago. So please, oh please, we beg, we pray, go throw your TV set away. And in its place you can install a lovely bookshelf on the wall. Then fill the shelves with lots of books, ignoring all the dirt looks and screams and yells and bites and kicks and children hitting you with sticks. Fear not, because we promise you that in about a week or two of having nothing else to do, they will now begin to feel the need of having something to read. And once they start, oh boy, oh boy, you watch the slowly growing joy that fills their hearts. They will grow so keen, they will wonder what they had ever seen in that ridiculous machine, that nauseating, foul, unclean, repulsive television screen. And later, each and every kid will love you more for what you did.